Is everybody over here? It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Nature Conservancy's Piney Grove Preserve. Great weather for it. I'm especially honored to welcome Governor Northam, Deputy Secretary of Natural and Historic Resources, Sachs, Deputy of uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation Director, Chrisman. Thanks, Clyde. Members of the board of the Virginia Land Conservation Foundation and the Department of Conservation and Recreation. We're here to celebrate the dedication of Piney Grove Flatwoods Natural Area Preserve since 1989, with the passage of the Virginia Natural Area Preserve Act, the Commonwealth and conservation-minded citizens and partners like the Nature Conservancy have been able to permanently protect and dedicate 66 natural area preserves across Virginia. These preserves, along with other conserved lands in Virginia, weave together a patchwork quilt of places that provide essential services to all citizens, clean air and water, natural habitats and ecosystems, public access, health and well-being, and a sense of place. The preserve system, at just over 60,000 acres, protects an extraordinary collection of native biological diversity. Within this relatively small acreage, our NAP system includes some of the very best remaining examples of our natural heritage like Piney Grove, including the largest assemblage of rare plants, animals, and natural communities found on any protected land base in Virginia. These significant natural heritage resources are each individually invaluable and irreplaceable. Like original paintings of a master artist or a rare fine wine, Virginia cured ham, or an ancient text, or a family heirloom uh, we all treasure for generations. And we at the Natural Heritage Program take the responsibility to find, conserve, and steward these special resources very seriously to ensure they're protected now and for future generations of Virginians to enjoy and appreciate. As part of that ongoing responsibility, we truly appreciate the partnership with the Nature Conservancy, uh, the, the Virginia Land Conservation Foundation, and others here who have made this day possible. We also like to acknowledge that this is just another small but essential piece of the puzzle needed to reassemble and restore a viable and functioning Pineland ecosystem down here in the southeast. The speakers who follow me will share more about the NAP system, management and restoration of the pine savannas that you see around you, the natural and cultural history of this site, and the critical partnerships that are working here today and around the state and our vision going forward. So to begin, I'd like to introduce Deputy Secretary of Natural and Historic Resources, Joshua Sachs. Thank you all. Good morning. First, let me send regards from Secretary Jennings, who is unable to be here today because of an important Chesapeake Bay meeting. Uh, I also want to welcome friends from DCR, from Department of Wildlife Resources, from Department of Forestry, uh, so many talented people who do so much great work to make things like this possible, and, and I just can't thank them enough. Um, I'm going to start by telling you all uh, something that is you shouldn't really admit when you're in Virginia, and that's that I am not from Virginia. I did not have that honor to be born in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. I come from another Commonwealth a little bit further north, and I spent many, many years working in D.C. for major national wildlife groups and conservation groups, and land conservation there meant big western landscapes. It meant things like bears' ears. It meant charismatic megafauna. And even though I lived right in D.C., I didn't know that much about Virginia until a friend of mine, former Secretary Strickler, asked me to come down here. And, and I had the honor, the privilege of a lifetime to work in this job as Secretary, Deputy Secretary of Natural Resources. And I learned from so many excellent people how majestic and wonderful Virginia is, that it can compete with Utah and Arizona and New Mexico. I got to learn about red cockaded woodpeckers and see pine savannas. I went on controlled burns. I learned about hellbenders, all sorts of rare mussels. I learned that Virginia is one of the most unique ecosystems in the country, and I learned it from my friends at DCR and my friends at the Nature Conservancy. And I got to learn it all, and I got to do these excellent things because Secretary Strickler, Secretary Jennings, and Governor Northam asked me to do these things, asked me to help protect Virginia's 
ecosystems and landscapes in a way that worked for everybody in Virginia. I got to work for a governor who challenged us to do things like make conserve Virginia and who was the first governor to to put forward record investments in land conservation and things like the Virginia Land Conservation Foundation and in increasing funding for the Natural Heritage Division, a division that often is pretty overlooked but brings us majestic places like this. So with no further ado, it's my privilege and honor to introduce the 73rd Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Governor Ralph Northam. All right, Josh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your words. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And what a beautiful morning it is. First of all, Brian, thanks for the tour early or on. It's, uh, you know, it's, everybody says thanks for being here. And uh, to get me out of Richmond and out here in the forest, you don't have to ask me twice. So, uh, thank you for that. And Josh, thank you for your, uh, your work for Virginia and, and your, your kind words. And it's impressive to, uh, to see what all you've learned about the best state in the best country in the world. But one thing I just wanted to maybe refresh your memory, and, uh, you, you, you went through the uh, litany of, of everything that you'd been exposed to, but I didn't hear you mention Chiggers. And, uh, <laughs> I also forgot to say the Eastern Shore is yeah. country. Yeah. <laughs> um, but every time I'm uh, invited out to uh, nature like this, especially when I'm near Clyde Christman, um, I get exposed to chiggers. So the good thing, I know it's, I know it's a little bit cool out here this morning. Uh, we've had probably a, a, a good little frost last night. So hopefully, Clyde, <laughs> you know, uh, for for Thanksgiving, we just as soon not be focused on on uh, having to get some fingernail polish, which is what we used to do on the Eastern Shore. But um, you know, I just wanted to take this opportunity. This is a an exciting. Day. This has been a, really a, a wonderful four years of, of uh, serving the, the uh, folks of Virginia. But just thank everybody for being here today, but also to welcome our partners, the Nature Conservancy, the, which is the world's largest land conservation organization, and it's headquartered right here in Virginia. Nikki, it is good to see you, and thanks for all that you've done over the years. Uh, also want to recognize, as I did, uh, Director Chrisman and DCR's Natural Heritage staff, uh, as well as partners from the Department of Forestry and the Department of Wildlife Resources. And I, I will make this point that I, I go around to, to events like this and, and uh, am asked to speak, but uh, we should all, always recognize that the reason we're be able to do things like this is because of the wonderful team that we have and, and the collaboration of, of all of you working together to, to really take Virginia to the next step. So uh, on behalf of a, a very grateful Commonwealth to all of you, and I'm sure there are folks that aren't here today that have been part of this, I, I say thank you very much. And so as you all, thank you, Josh. So we're here today to dedicate Virginia's 66 natural area preserve, uh, which is called Piney Grove Flatwoods. 446 acres, one of the largest blocks of fire-managed southern pine savanna in Virginia. Uh, it's home, as you all know, they tell us anyway, to the endangered uh, red cockaded woodpecker, the RCW. Now, um, we walked down the trail this morning and they said that they had paid for these birds to be out here and um, I don't know how much you all spent on it, but um, and if anybody can alert me when you see one or take a picture, um, I'd appreciate it. But anyway, I, just uh, kidding me, uh, just the, the wonderful things you all have done to preserve this rare habitat. The new preserve is part of a 10,000 acre conservation area that includes Big Wood State Forest, Big Woods Wildlife Management Area, and the Nature Conservancy's Big Woods. We're able to preserve this land thanks to the Nature Conservancy, which has purchased it with the assistance of a grant from the Virginia Land Conservation Foundation. This project is an excellent example of how we have approached conservation during our term. We set out to conserve with purpose to ensure that we're conserving land with the greatest public benefit and with the highest conservation value. That's why we created as Josh said, the Conserve Virginia program, 
to help us identify the best conservation investments. I'm proud to say that in our four years, we have conserved more than 120,000 acres of land with high conservation value. Like big woods, many of those acres protect rare ecosystems and allow species to adapt to a warming climate. They protect water quality, cultural heritage sites, and scenic views and vistas. And whenever possible, we've sought to help conserve lands that allow for public access like this area will. The Virginia Land Conservation Foundation uses Conserve Virginia to help evaluate the grant applications it receives, and the tool has helped us ensure sites like this are conserved. Protecting sites like this are also the best way for Virginia to join President Biden's goal of conserving at least 30 percent of U.S. land and ocean by 2030. This goal is a reminder that protecting our planet means protecting nature and wild places. And conserving land is an essential part of the work we've done during our term to protect Virginia's environment and take historic steps towards clean energy. We signed the Clean Energy Economy Act. We've joined REGI. We pushed the development of offshore wind. We've created the Coastal Resilience Master Plan and created the strongest bay cleanup plan in history. Those and many other actions we've taken all are part of a concerted effort to protect, preserve, and sustain our natural environment. We want future generations to enjoy the land and water, the scenic areas, and the natural resources that we enjoy. Investing in land conservation is essential to making the Commonwealth a wonderful place to live and visit. Dedicating Piney Grove Flatwoods today is an excellent way to celebrate all we have done together to protect Virginia's natural resources. So again, um, I can't thank you all enough. I, uh, I'm so proud of what we together have been able to accomplish in the last four years. And I was just telling Nikki um, before I came up here, I, you know, that we have four years to get done what we can. Uh, Virginia. Uh, for better or worse, is the the only state in which uh, the governor has has one term, and so uh, I think the work that you all have done together is just is really uh, amazing. It's uh, commendable, and and when we turn the keys over to the next administration, I I can truly say that uh, Virginia's in a better place than we when we found it four years ago, and that's that's all we can ask for anybody. So. So thank you all, and Clyde. I'm not sure who are you next in line or. Yes, Nikki. So I would like to introduce. All right. <laughs> to the podium, please welcome Nikki Rovner from the Nature Conservancy. Nikki, welcome. Well, thank you, Governor Northam. It's, it's really su such an honor to be here today with you and to be able to represent the Nature Conservancy at this awesome event. Um, uh, dedicating a new natural area preserve here is a really landmark event from the point of view of the Nature Conservancy, and I'd, I'd like to make a few remarks about that. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about beer. <laughs> and you may wonder why I am talking about beer at an event at 9.30 in the morning. Um, and the reason is because the Black Narrows uh, Brewing Company in Chincoteague, Virginia, um, has made this beer, Longleaf IPA, to honor places like this. And uh, the story is that the brewer there, uh, Josh Chapman, learned about our collective efforts to restore longleaf pine in Virginia um, through an article he read in the Virginia Pilot. And he was inspired to try to figure out a way to educate people in Virginia about this marvelous ecosystem. And um, what he decided to do was to brew a beer. And he, um, he actually uh, uh, came here and um, got some longleaf pine needles and twigs and use and infuse the beer with that. And um, so there are some of these that you can grab on your way out to enjoy later. 
Um, and you'll also enjoy the art on the can, which shows a red cockaded woodpecker and a longleaf pine, um, a pine savanna, and, um, and, the, and the art of the beer itself. So um, we're so grateful for this opportunity to, to share this with you. Um, so let me come back to the subject of, of, of this event. Um, and, and, and just talk about a few themes about what this means to us at the Nature Conservancy and, and, and how happy we are to be working with DCR in this really important place. Um, and I'm going to talk about, about four themes, the first being the, the, the thing that unifies the Natural Heritage Program and the Nature Conservancy, which is biodiversity. I mean, that is our North Star. It is uh, Natural Heritage's North Star. It's, it's been that way for us for 60 years. It's been that way for... Uh, Natural Heritage for over 30 years started with a little help from, from TNC and um, that, that partnership and that shared history is just something that means so much to us um, and that's why we're just so, so thrilled uh, to be working together here. Um, and, and we have been for a long time, but the dedication of the 66 Natural Area Preserve just really solidifies that partnership in this particular place. Um, you know, this, this longleaf pine ecosystem is incredibly biodiverse. And um, it is, uh, you know, this northern stronghold that we have here in Virginia is just something we're so lucky to have and something that a lot of people don't know about. I, I also grew up in another commonwealth and I didn't know anything about this ecosystem when I got here to Virginia. But through the privilege of working through the Nature Conservancy, I've, I've learned to, um, to uh, appreciate the beauty of it and the, the um, the natural history, which is just so remarkable. Um, the the uh, red cockaded woodpecker, the only woodpecker that nests in live trees, the fact that there's a fungus involved in their ability to nest in those live trees, um, and uh, and everything that it takes to, to restore this ecosystem. Um, and, and the science, that's the second theme, that is so important to the heritage program and so important to Nature Conservancy, that's what allows us to know where it is important to do this land conservation work. Um, and we rely on science from the Heritage Program, as do a lot of organizations, through Conserve Virginia and all the, all the uh, biological inventory that the Heritage Program has been doing for that, for that 30 years. Um, when we spend millions of dollars, of philanthropic dollars, of state dollars, to acquire a piece of ground, we need to know that it's, that it's an important place to acquire from a biodiversity perspective. And we know that because of the science that we do together. Um, science is what informs the complex strategies that we employ to manage places like this, like prescribed fire. Um, and science is uh, obviously incredibly important to um, the work of trying to recover a fairly endangered species like the red cockaded woodpecker. The third theme is partnerships. And you know, in an event like that, like this, people, people always say that, right? They say partnerships, but <laughs> it couldn't possibly be more true than at a place like this. Uh, Virginia has a longleaf cooperators group. It is a model for other places where longleaf pine is being um, is being restored. Um, such strong partnerships, not just with Natural Heritage and the Nature Conservancy, but the Department of Forestry, the Department of Wildlife Resources as well. Um, it's really a strong uh, partnership, and it's it's what allows us to um, to achieve long lasting at scale conservation. Um, the third theme is people, and um, I, I have to say, Brian Van Yard and my colleague helped me with these remarks, and I just, I just love <laughs> uh, uh, this this theme and 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 the, his way of thinking about it that he suggested it to, that he suggested to me. Um, so people, people who manage this place, people like Bobby and Rebecca and Darren and Sam, right? So those people love this place. Um, there are people here who have retired from service with Natural Heritage who are here because they love this place today. Um, you don't see that everywhere in state government, but you see that, you see that in Natural Heritage. Um, the people who've managed this land uh, for forest products, the loggers who've helped to manage this land, they're important people too. Um, the people who come to visit, that's, you know, this is, this is going to be public land. We, we want citizens of Virginia to see this place. Um, <laughs> um, you know, and there are a lot of people who may or may not be aware that they're benefiting from the eco services, the ecosystem services that are that are being provided from a place like this. But they do benefit. Um, and then we have to think about the people who are here before us, right? Homesteaders, um, people who work the land for timber, and the Native Americans who were here before European settlers showed up. 
So we honor all those people uh, in a place like this. So um, in closing, we're just so grateful to you, Governor Northam, for your leadership and from what um, everything you've done to enable these four themes that I talked about. Um, the, the funding that you've made available for conservation has, has been tremendous. Um, we're very much looking forward to seeing what's in your, in your very last budget that you're gonna <laughs> introduce in a month. Oh, I can have that beer. <laughs> All right, <laughs> absolutely. Um, uh, you know, conserve Virginia like you talked about, bringing the science of natural heritage, um, uh, sharing it in, in a way that informs land conservation across the state. Um, the Community Flood Preparedness Program um, that is enabled by our joining Reggie. I mean, the capping of carbon emissions from power plants is incredibly important, but so is that funding that's going to be used to make Virginia more resilient. Really, really important. Um, you mentioned a number of other things. They're all important. I'll just say that um, the people that we work with so closely in state natural resources agencies, they, they knew when they were working on something they thought was important for conservation that you thought it was important too, and that's incredibly valuable and something that um, we're so grateful to you for. Um, and just, you know, the, 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 the deals that you've gotten done, you know, when Missy and I worked for Governor Kane, we knew about the Falkland Farm. We knew about Stanley Land and Lumber. We, we wanted to see those places become natural area preserves and state forests. Um, you got it done. Y'all got that done. Um, in the last four years. And that's just a, that's an amazing thing and something that future generations will be really grateful for. So, um, you know, the nature, the, the, the Northern administration has enabled the success that we're seeing here at the Piney, Glows Flat, Piney Grove Flatwoods Preserve. Say that four times fast. Um, and we're really so grateful for all that you and your administration have done. So thank you so much. Okay, I think whoever set up the flag, you measured it just within inches, so good job. Uh, Governor Northland, thank you so much for, for making the time out of your schedule to be here with us today. And uh, to carry on to what seems to be a common theme, I will confess that I also grew up in another commonwealth, and so for those of you who don't know, uh, the three of us are all Pennsylvanians, and there's a lot of great things clearly that come from Pennsylvania, but it's been an amazing blessing for me to be here in Virginia for the past 31 years. Um, and so again, Governor Northam and all of you, I want to say thank you for coming out today to help us celebrate. You know, we in the conservation business, we often have our heads down, we are focused on the next conservation project, and we rarely stop to celebrate uh, whenever we have a big conservation success. And so uh, we're here today to celebrate this success and thank you all for helping uh, to do that. As I look around, uh, I see the choir. No one here needs convinced that we are celebrating a great event. I see wonderful people committed to doing their part to protect Virginia's rich natural heritage. In my first year with your Virginia Natural Heritage Program, during a scorecard meeting, we discussed this very place. Just to explain, in the 1980s and 90s, natural heritage programs and state and regional staff from the Nature Conservancy would meet on an annual basis to talk about conservation priorities for the coming year, and we called those scorecard meetings. Well, in that 1990 meeting, Michael Lipford made an impassioned presentation about why we needed to get to work and protect the last remaining red cockaded woodpeckers uh, in Virginia and restore their habitat so that RCWs and all the species associated with them would continue to thrive here in Virginia. In the 1950s, RCWs were doing okay in Virginia. We had uh, over 20 sites with RCWs. By 2002, we were down to two breeding pairs. Well, not long after that scorecard meeting, Michael, who was then the Heritage Program Director, left uh, DCR and became uh, the State Field Office Director for the Nature Conservancy. And not long after that, set about uh, the business of Piney Grove, and in 1999, the Nature Conservancy purchased its first tract uh, here at Piney Grove. So we have come so far, and we have got so much to be proud of. 
at the time uh, of that scorecard meeting in 1990, we had zero state natural area preserves. Zero. Today we celebrate number 66, 59,841 acres. Uh, and I always think acres are pretty easy to count, at least for us who are into counting acres. That, that's pretty easy. Um, but most importantly, we have protected 870 populations of 493 different rare plant, rare animal, and significant natural communities on your natural preserve system. With seven more heritage resources being added to the list with this dedication, such as the oak toad, the barking tree frog, coastal plain seasonal ponds, and yep, RCW habitat. The system 66 preserves is an amazing collection of the best biodiversity that Virginia has to offer, and everyone is filled with rich history and story. The system holds many of the most beautiful and interesting outdoor experiences in Virginia, from the dunes of Savage Neck on the eastern shore to the $34 million, 2,800-acre old-growth forests and wetlands at Crow's Nest, to the 360-degree views atop the Blue Ridge from Buffalo Mountain and Floyd County to the Cedars of Lee County. The Cedars is a rich and complex karst land, and in many ways, I always think that it's one of our most ambitious undertakings. Since the first tract in 1997, 30 more tracts have been added, totaling 2,231 acres in Lee County of the richest karst habitat and species diversity to be found. There's much more to protect there and lots of work for us still to do. So how did all of this happen? Well, thanks to the vision of Dr. Bob Jenkins, the Nature Conservancy's first director of science who created the methodology of heritage programs and established them across North America. Thanks to the Nature Conservancy, John Daniel, our first secretary of, of natural, of, uh, natural resources uh, and the Department of Conservation and Recreation and other partners, the Virginia Natural Heritage Program was launched in 1986. The citizens have asked for and supported the protection of Virginia's biodiversity. From the Virginia Outdoor Survey, we now know that protecting and visiting natural areas, it's the number one outdoor recreation need and demand. When we started asking that question some 20 years ago, uh, it didn't even make the graph. It was sitting down on the bottom when, when we asked that question. Uh, DCR has been an excellent home for the Natural Heritage Program, supporting it over the past 35 years. Um, an amazing collection of partners have been supportive of the program from the Virginia Native Plant Society, clearly the Nature Conservancy, Virginia Master Naturalists, local, state, and federal agencies, just to name a few. Um, Clyde has been a huge fan of the Heritage Program um, from the time that he was with House Appropriations and we took him out on his first prescribed burn. I think we had him hooked right there um, to Senate Finance and now as our director. Governor Northam, former Secretary Strickler, Secretary Jennings, Deputy Secretary Sachs have supported their program like no others in my 31 years here at DCR. An amazing team of biologists, some of the best botanists, zoologists, vegetation ecologists, and natural area managers in the country have been working for 35 years to find and understand the biological status of thousands of species in Virginia. Working with their natural heritage colleagues across North America and the Western Hemisphere, we build a system of the best available knowledge, just not just of what we know here in Virginia, but across their entire range. So that when we say it's rare, it's found at three places in the world, you can take that to the bank and know that your natural area preserve system has been built on and is managed with the best available science, period. Finally, I'd like to say that the past 31 years here in Virginia and the past 41 years working in biodiversity conservation have been a true blessing for me. It's hard to imagine a better place and collection of colleagues to share my 66th and final naturally preserved dedication as a DCR employee today. And in this place, I'm with true conservation partners standing in a landscape level pine savanna that's habitat for many known and unknown resources protected and managed 
thanks to this partnership, those of you here. I believe that we are in the forever business. This site's testimony to that belief where it's destined to stand in the face of climate change, our greatest challenge. Thanks to the division of work and work of our generation, 150 years from now, longleaf pine will have replaced the existing loblolly. Pine savanna species will be thriving and those who stand here, perhaps they'll be our great, great, great grandchildren. They'll have reason for hope and joy. Onward and upward to all of us. Thank you very much. And Clyde, I think you're up next. Sorry, I had to pick that up. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. Uh, wow, this is, uh, this is awesome. And uh, there's so much that I, that I want to say. I hope you don't mind my speech. is about maybe 42 minutes, Governor, <laughs> give or take a minute. Um, but the first thing I want to do is I want to recognize Tom Smith. Um, I think many of you know... Tom's last uh, official uh, activity, well, I don't know, it keeps changing, but it will be December 4th uh, at the Cave Board meeting, but I think you've got something else booked too, but Tom is retiring effective, I guess, January 1. January 1. <clears throat> I'm going to hold it. How about that? Um, and, uh, but Tom, I mean, the, uh, you and I have been friends for so long. Uh, I remember when I first started House Appropriations, and I didn't even know we had a natural heritage program. And Tom came over and, and told me about everything uh, that was happening and, and some of these ambitious plans. And I think at that point in time in 1998, we had how many? Maybe six or so? Six or seven natural air preserves. So to think that we're here today talking about number 66, I mean, that is phenomenal in that short period of time. And I was thinking about that survey, Tom, maybe one reason people are now more excited about answering that question is because we have provided more access and more opportunity. And, that, and we're just getting started. But the more opportunity we have to be able to have places like this that the public can go and get away and just go for a, a, a nice walk and get away from all that stress of the city um, and, and breathe the clean air out here and all these beautiful trees, Rob, as we talked about this, this a working forest and, and, and harvesting some of this timber and then replanting with some longleaf pine um, are, are definitely things that will be happening in the future. But Tom, the leadership that you have, when I first took over at DCR, um, I think you all know that we had some challenges then at DCR, but I will say the Natural Heritage Division was not one of those challenges because Tom uh, had, has done such a good job over the years of, of assembling a staff uh, like no other, the most dedicated, most dedicated state employees I have ever seen in our in our Natural Heritage Division, and and so much of this is 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 Tom's efforts and, and his leadership. And Tom, you're going to be uh, you're definitely going to be missed. I think many of you have met Frank Stovall, who is going to be uh, filling some really big shoes. Uh, Frank's uh, been we had the the privilege of having Frank with a little overlap from with Tom, so that we could uh, get the opportunity to uh, uh, for him to drink from both ends. From of the fire hose here uh, is uh, learning, trying to learn uh, everything that Tom knows is probably not possible. But I hope I hope Tom will leave you his cell phone number, Frank, so you can call him and ask for advice on occasion. So, Nikki, what can I say? I first met Nikki in 1998 when I joined House Appropriations staff, and Nikki was working in legislative services at that point in time, and we worked together uh, right out of the gate on a lot of lot of great legislation over the years. And uh, I guess 17 years now that you've been with the Nature Conservancy. It's hard to believe it's been that long. It seemed like just yesterday when you went over there, but uh, uh, in my time at Senate Finance working with you, I mean, we've done so many great things over the years, but the, the partnership is just uh, is what makes this all work because we just couldn't do it. We, Governor, I'd love to get you out here on one of the prescribed burns and you see all the different uniforms and all the different agencies and everyone's out here working as a team. Uh, it, it's sort of like an all-star game, but much more exciting because they, you know, they all wear their own helmet, but they have that same uniform. But uh, anyways, it is it is just amazing. Um, and, and Rob, it's great to see you out here. Thank you very much for joining us. And Bruce, uh, Bruce Vilk with our, our board. Uh, Bruce, good to see you. Uh, we haven't seen each other in a while because we haven't been able to have board meetings uh, thanks to this pandemic. But hopefully uh, that will be beyond us soon. But um, Governor Northam, it has been uh, a true honor and privilege. Uh, 38 years now that I've been in public service, 
And the last four have been the best by far. Um, working with you and your team um, and your leadership. Um, and I, I, I just can't express enough from my heart what, and most importantly, your friendship. Um, uh, when you and I go back from when uh, when I was in, you came into the Senate as a freshman, and I did your freshman orientation, and uh, and uh, and and uh, it's, it's just been a great opportunity. I remember the day you called me and told me you were going to run for governor. And you remember what I said? Why do you want to do that? <laughs> And I, I know a couple times since then you've called me up and said, "Why did you talk? Why didn't you talk me out of this?" But uh, your your leadership over the last four years, you know, think about it. We opened four state parks, now up to 41 state parks, over 70,000 acres. Here we are at number 66 natural area preserve. So DCR now is over 130,000 acres that we work to protect. And this is a great oper This is this is a great example of an opportunity. We don't have to own all these either. We let the Nature Conservancy have the headache of the fee simple ownership, and we have the deed of dedication for this particular natural area preserve. So it's a model that we use well because we make our resources go further when we when we join our resources together. Um, so, uh, you know, again, it's been a, a great opportunity eight years here as the DCR director. You get you get the flags flying and you get the plants <laughs> going. Um, if you'll notice, we did learn that the flag has not blown over yet today. We got those in the ground really good. But um, it, And it's sort of cool just to think about standing out here in the middle of the woods with a podium and a flag you know, doing this incredible de uh, dedication here. But uh, again, to all of our partners, uh, I just want to thank you all for being out here today. Um, there is some warm cider and some warm coffee and some good cookies. And um, uh, Nikki, uh, you said to go one beer, Governor, we'll give you a 12 pack if you like. Um, but uh, uh, we're really just uh, exciting now. It's hard to believe these four years have just, it just seems like, I, I remember working at your inauguration. I remember how cold it was that day started snowing out there in the morning it seems like just yesterday and uh, so hard to believe that that four years has just flown by so fast but uh, again uh, from the bottom of my heart I can't express enough the uh, the faith that you put in me and you, you let us do so much good stuff and you've been there with us the whole time and supporting us um, and uh, in my book you're the best governor <laughs> so with that um, uh, again, thank you all for coming out. Feel free to take a hike. Uh, you might be able to see a woodpecker along the way somewhere. But if you if you can't find one, there is one on the can. So you, <laughs> we did promise you'd see one. So, all right. Thank you all.